Hey guys, it's Joe the Android Guy with PocketNow.com. Recently, Michael Fisher asked a question. Why is his tethered internet connection so much more fragile than, well, just on his cell phone alone? It's an interesting question, but a little bit of an interesting answer. Let's go take a look. So here's our scenario. You're riding a train, you've got your cell phone in your pocket and your tethering turned on, you've got your tablet sitting on your lap, and you're reading the news or surfing your favorite website, which we all know is pocketnow.com. So you notice that something happens and your articles aren't coming up and it's a pain in the neck because uh, you just dropped connection and it says that it can't load the page. Well, that's not our fault. That's not your phone's fault. But it kind of is. So first, let's talk about cellular phones and how they work. And I know this is going to be like remedial cellular telephony for most of us. But hang out with me because it applies. So the way a cell phone works is imagine circles drawn on a map. Those circles are essentially the radius or the diameter or the area. Man, I need to go back to geometry where a cell phone signal can reach, with the point in the middle being the cell phone tower itself. Fair enough, right? Well, you start putting more cells on the map and you start getting more circles on the map and hopefully those circles overlap because if they don't, you have holes. You have gaps in your coverage where you, honestly, you drop calls. It's a pain in the neck. We've, we've been there, we've done that. We don't have that much of a problem anymore. We've got pretty much blanketed coverage except for weird areas you know, where topography kind of dictates that the signals skip over the top of it or maybe they don't reach the top of it or it's a building and they bounce all around it who knows but that notwithstanding that's what cells are that's in fact why we call them cells they're just little round circles on a map now what happens is when you turn on your phone you connect to the cell that you're closest to not necessarily you connect to the cell that has the strongest signal, which may not be the one that you're closest to, ironically enough. So that's a myth we just dispelled right there. One of the nice things about cell phones is they're mobile. I know you guys all know that, but did you ever wonder how that works? Because if you're connected to your closest cell tower at home, and then you hop in your car to go to work, hop on your bike, get on a bus, ride a train, whatever, you're still not connected to that cell at your house. You just can't go that far. It's not going to happen. So what happens? How does it work? Well, ironically, it's not like you think. So as you start leaving your cellular area, moving around in it, that one cell that you're connected to, the signal gets weaker and weaker and weaker the further you get away from it. Well, as you're doing that, the signals from other cells become stronger and stronger. Now, you might be getting closer to two or three cells that are stronger than the one that you connected to originally. And you'd think that as soon as one signal becomes stronger than the one that you're connected to now, you're going to hand off. Most of the times, that's not the case. Instead, what happens is your cell phone will stay connected to the tower that you were originally connected to as long as it can. Okay? Until that signal drops so poor that it can't maintain a connection anymore, it's going to stay connected there even if there are two or three or even four or five cells that have a stronger signal. Now, why does it do that? There are lots of reasons, but simply put, it doesn't know if you're going to move back to that original cell. That's one reason. Because if it, if it just handed off willy-nilly like that, you'd be bounced back and forth between cells very, very quickly. And then you've got load balancing and whatnot of the cells that are impacted. You also have that negotiation. There's overhead there. Essentially, the, the cells, which have computers in them, have to calculate how to hand off your information to that next one, and there's a process involved there. The more times that happens, the more processing power it takes, the more electricity it takes, the slower it is for everybody else, yada, yada, yada. So essentially, those two reasons. You're going to stay connected to that weak signal until it's so weak that it can't handle you anymore. Here's a downside to that. First of all, your signal strength drops, so your data speeds drop. Really wasn't a big deal with you know voice phones because voice is voice. As long as your voice quality is okay, you're okay. Because uh, a voice conversation is a voice conversation and 
no big deal. Data, on the other hand, data varies significantly. Your speed's going to fluctuate, and it's going to go down the further you are away from that cell. So we might want to update our cell phone towers carriers to handle that. We'll come back to that in a minute. The second reason is battery life. You've got a battery inside there, okay? And just nestled right inside your phone, and then there's a cell phone antenna too. Well, the further away you are from that tower, the stronger the signal is that you have to send out, which takes more power, so that you can maintain that connection. That, of course, eats your battery faster. So every once in a while, if you find yourself in that situation, turn your phone off or go into airplane mode and come back up. That will help quite a bit. So now we know how cell signals hand off from one cell to another. And in normal activity, that's you know not a problem. When we start getting on to faster and faster modes of transit, whether that's a vehicle, and of course, you're a passenger when you're using your phone in your car, right? You're not driving and using your phone. Sure hope not. There's your PSA for the day. PSA's public safety announcement. So what about when you're on a train or a bus or you know some other form of mass transit that goes kind of fast? Well, here's something interesting. As you're moving away from one cell and approaching another cell, again, that handoff doesn't happen until the original cell is so weak that it just doesn't work anymore. By that point, you may already be past the, the next greatest powerful cell. That doesn't make much sense because you're, you're already past it. You're, you should be looking to the next one and kind of, you know, leapfrog from one, skip one to the next one, right? possibly. Well, you can't do that right now. So you're constantly being shuffled from one cell to another cell that's already behind you in a lot of cases. Now, here's the funny thing. We have the technology now that we could tell the cell phone tower, here's who I am, and here's where I'm going, and here's my speed. And that cell tower has the intelligence, potentially, to know, ah, he's on the train. Therefore, I want to make sure that I'm passing him off to these cells in this sequence as this goes on. And it would help boost the signal for everybody. Now, we're not doing that right now. Why? Because it's going to require new protocols, both in the cellular radios and new bits, new, new processes inside the cells themselves. It's not being done. It really should be. But, you know, what are you going to do? So in the meantime, that's what we have. That's okay, though, because cell phones have this tolerance built into them. They know they're a cell phone, and they know that they should expect this kind of behavior, so they minimize that impact on us. So it's more transparent. We don't see it. That's where the fragility comes in. Okay, so back to our cell phone. Everything works great here, but as soon as you come over here, even though it's the same internet connection, things break. So why is that? First reason, you're adding another layer of complexity. You've got Wi-Fi to deal with now. You can have lots of other people on the train or on the bus or you know, in the carpool lane next to you that all have their Wi-Fi bubbles on that are interfering with you. So now you've got Wi-Fi interference to consider. We're just gonna skip past that because there's really nothing you can do about that. And changing channels and whatnot, but phones really don't have that power, that capability, included in them, so what are you going to do? The next thing that we have, of course, is this doesn't know you're on cellular. It doesn't have those tolerances. It doesn't make that experience transparent to you like the cellular phone does. Kind of makes sense, right? This doesn't know if I'm connected to my cell phone by tethering or if I'm connected to my Wi-Fi point here in my house or if we're connected to, say, a mesh network at the college campus or at my, uh, my work compound. It doesn't know. They're very different types of networks, but this treats them all the same and there's a relatively low level of tolerance there. So when a problem happens, you're more apt to see it here than you are when you're on your native device. Lastly, and this might be a little bit too obvious once I say it, if you're using this as your device that you're tethered to, where do you keep it when you're using this? When you're surfing the web, it's out here like this. Guess what? That antenna, it's got free reign. You've got a stronger signal right here when you're surfing the web on your phone. 
Now I've got it in my holster or in my pocket or in my bag or in my briefcase. And you know what? I just lost a whole bunch of signal strength by putting it way down there. I don't see that though because I'm surfing the web up here on my tablet. So if I were to take my phone, have it in my hand and just kind of keep it out here like this and surf like this, I'd look really silly but I'd probably have a better experience. Keep that in mind. If you've got fragile tethering experiences, pull out your cell phone, set it down on the tray next to you or the seat next to you. Just don't go off and leave it please. That's sad. Then we have to do a video on what to do if your wife's phone gets stolen. You know, all kinds of fun stuff like that. Which we did, by the way. Fun story. If you haven't seen it, uh, make sure you go and do Android Guy Weekly. But three reasons why your tablet connection or your laptop connection is more fragile when you're tethering than your cell phone connection in the same location. I hope you found it educational. I hope you learned something from it. And I hope it makes your tethering experiences a little bit better. Of course, those are just a few of my observations and a few of the tips that I was able to put together. I want to hear some of your tips. So please, if you've got any ideas, any extra technical information you'd like to add, some, uh, some stories that you have of where tethering was problematic and what you did to fix it, head over to pocketnow.com, leave an article or leave a comment on this article so that we can all participate there in one place. See, we've got a little bit of a problem where a lot of us talk on the YouTube comments and a lot of us talk on the Pocket Now comments and they're separate. So I'm going to put a link right down there. If you're on the YouTube page, you'll know where I'm talking about. If you're on Pocket Now, you're already there. Don't worry about it. But right down there, I'll have a link to this article so you can put all of your comments there. And please do. That's it. Do you like it? If so, I want to know. Again, leave me a comment. For Pocket Now and the Android Guy Weekly, I'm Joe Levi.